Automakers are intentionally choosing not to make affordable vehicles. The average transaction price for a new vehicle has ticked back up, Dad. It's at $48,623. And some automakers, I'm looking at you, Jeep, have increased their MSRPs by 60 plus percent in the past five years. Let's talk about it, Dad. Why have automakers chosen to not make affordable vehicles? They have chosen profits over volume. It's pretty simple. Um, they have they have chosen in their pursuit of moving forward with battery electric vehicles, they have chosen to build high priced, high profit margin vehicles in order to underwrite that move into EV. So the the logical choice for them was, OK, we're going to sell fewer vehicles, but we're going to make more money on the vehicles that we do sell. And that has caused a situation where there are fewer and fewer people actually in the marketplace to be able to buy a car. So you're saying that the reason automakers have chosen to stop making cheap and affordable new vehicles is because they made strategic decisions to invest in electric vehicles and to underwrite that investment in electric vehicles, they found a way to make extra profit. The way to make extra profit was to produce more expensive vehicles, sell fewer of them, but make more per vehicle. Am I understanding you correctly? You are understanding me correctly. And then, and then you, all these companies, they're beholden to their stockholders and stockholders want profit over everything else. And so that dictates what the CEOs decide to do as to how they're going to move forward. So you have, you have pressure from stockholders and board members. You have the internal pressures as to where you're going to raise the cash flow to be able to pursue these battery electric vehicles moving forward. And the, the choice was, well, we're going to sell fewer vehicles, but we're going to make more money on the fewer vehicles that we produce in order to underwrite all that. Um, it is almost as if they have said, customers be damned. One automaker dad that has demonstrated this the most would be Stellantis. We talk about Stellantis on this channel all the time. We have tons of clips and videos and, and all sorts of things about how they are struggling to sell their inventory and how they have an oversupply. Jeep, let's focus in on just Jeep. Stellantis owns Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Jeep went early to the battery, electric, and plug-in hybrid EV direction, dad. We know there's the four by E variants of various Jeep models, and we know that those are very expensive and not selling particularly well, dad. You can see in Jeep sales numbers, Dad. It was back in 2018, Jeep sold nearly 1 million new vehicles in the United States. In 2023, that number was as low as 642,000. At the same time, the MSRP on a Jeep during that same time period went up 61%. So there's a perfect example of an automaker who is transitioning to very expensive, you know, uh, four by E variants of their uh, classic models choosing to go incredibly upmarket with price points. I mean, some of these Jeeps cost 70, 80, 90, 100,000 dollars, Dad. Now, Dad, maybe the day of reckoning is among us. CNBC just did a video the other day talking about how automakers are choosing to not make affordable vehicles. And there's a bunch of uproar over on that video, and I'm sure we'll see it here as well. And we know incentive spending is going through the roof. Jeep and various other Stellantis executives have been turned over. Incentives are going up. They even reduced their MSRPs recently. So it seems like maybe the reckoning is happening and we're, we're, we are reverting back to how things used to be, where prices have to come down. For the first time ever, CarEdge Concierge Car Buying Service is $100 off. You have until December 2nd to take advantage of this great opportunity at CarEdge.com slash concierge. Well, one, one of the things we do know for certain is that Many, many buyers out there are absolutely shocked when they get to the dealership if they haven't been in the market for, I don't know, the last five or seven years. If they're thinking back to what they purchased their vehicle for five years ago and they go in today and suddenly it's 61% higher than what it was then, well, they suddenly realized they can't afford the vehicle. The price has escalated so quickly that it's out of reach for a lot of people. And so that impacts ultimately what the manufacturers have to do. Uh, and at a certain point, uh, even though they might not want to, they're going to have to figure out how to produce lower profit margin um, entry-level vehicles that have 
a bit more profit built into them moving forward than what they had in them in the past. Now, Dad, that reckoning is also being influenced by the fact that consumers just can't afford vehicles. Edmunds published some research recently that showed price points that consumers want to spend on a new and used vehicle and the actual number of transactions that take place at that price point. And it's just, you know, it's it's damning to see. Consumers want lower price point vehicles and just no automakers are producing them. And isn't that what capitalism affords? Like the company here that's going to win is going to be the one that meets the consumer where they are. So should we expect to see not only more incentives, but a reversion back to more cheaper and affordable vehicles in the near future? Because at the end of the day, the consumer votes with their pocketbook, right? And and typically that vote is what drives what manufacturers build. So at a certain point, the manufacturer is going to have to produce what it is that the customer's asking for. You can only produce what you want to produce for so long before sales continue to slide and what you thought were profitable vehicles to produce suddenly become unprofitable because nobody's buying them. Yeah, Dad, so at the end of the day, we should anticipate, you know, the title of this video is why uh, automakers choose not to make affordable vehicles. Probably two, three years from now, it'll be an update on this. It'll be like, oh, automakers decided that they do need to make affordable vehicles because as sales go down and you have to produce uh, or spend even more in incentives to transact those vehicles, it's just not profitable like you thought it was going to be. And also, there's some question marks moving forward, Dad, about the electric vehicle push and how you know how uh, aggressive that will be in the United States moving forward and internationally. Look, even Volkswagen, we've done videos about Volkswagen struggling internationally because they went all in on electric vehicles and it hasn't really panned out. So I do wonder, Dad, if this up, there'll be an update to this video years and years to come because you know automakers chose intentionally not to make affordable vehicles and now i think their hands going to be forced back in the other direction they do have to make some affordable ve affordable vehicles and i will mention that like general motors for example is doing better than their other domestic peers ford and stellantis and part of that is because they actually have offered some affordable mm -hmm. vehicles to consumers i'm looking at the tracks the traverse etc Ford and Slantis can't really match them on some of those vehicles that are more volume sellers. So it'll be interesting to see, but I do think that, that uh, some egg in the face of these executives at these automakers who thought, okay, let's just keep jacking up the prices because obviously people will keep buying them. Finally, people said enough is enough and we're starting to see the repercussions of that. And I know you think it's going to take years. I think realistically, we'll see it take months. And what I mean by that is I think we'll see significant movement towards producing um, more entry-level vehicles by the end of 2025. For the first time ever, Car Edge Concierge Car Buying Service is $100 off. You have until December 2nd to take advantage of this great opportunity at CarEdge.com slash Concierge.